Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're going to create team sheets with transparent logos. All right, first, a huge shout out goes to Mark Huckle at Pirin Films for his wonderful support. He reached out to me and asked me about creating transparent logos for team sheets, which are basically a roster that goes on the screen during a game uh, and you're putting it on the timeline. And uh, I needed to understand exactly what he wanted to do. So once we went back and forth and I, and I understood that, then I broke it down, created a tutorial, sent it to him, it helped him out. So then I created this new one for everyone else. Mark is the perfect example of the kind of person I like to work with because he helped me understand what he needed. I gave him what he needed. And as a result, he ended up donating to Video Revealed. Uh, there's a donation button right on the front for that. So appreciation uh, goes out to Mark for that. Thank you very much. All right, so the big thing is taking a JPEG logo, making it transparent, and then dropping it in with the text and the other graphics in Premiere Pro. Let's go have a look. So let's jump into Photoshop first of all and look at this typical JPEG logo. A lot of times you get supplied a logo like this and it is a JPEG and you can see in our layers it's a flat background. There's no transparency. If you drop this in you've got a big white background. Over on the left hand side in our eraser if you click in the eraser button and hold it down at the bottom is a magic eraser. If you're lucky, you can click somewhere on the white and completely delete that background. You'll notice over on the right hand side, Photoshop turns that into a layer now and you can see our transparency. This will only work if you have enough contrast between the back and the front. And you can see we've got this dark reddish orange against white. Magic Eraser is perfect when you have enough contrast. So this one's done. I'm gonna crop it first and then export it out as a, a ping. I could leave this as a PSD if I wanted to, but I'm gonna tap my C key and crop this. So just to make it a little bit smaller to work with when it gets into Premiere Pro. Just set this up as a crop and then export this out as a ping. So save as and down at the bottom, make sure I'm in a PNG or ping format. Okay, now let's go look at the Kent logo, which is a little bit harder to uh, automatically remove. So again, I'll try this with the magic eraser. I'll click and your first thought is, hey, it did a good job. But if we look over here at these edges, you can see right there, it's not working. And what I like to do, if I am working on transparency, I create, a solid color background. So just clicking there, solid color, I make it a very bright green and drag it below. This way I can see what's going on um, while I'm working on that logo because this Kent logo has some light gray edges against the white background, so it is hard to see. So let's go back to the beginning And again, I'll drag that, I'll create that solid green. And this time I'll double click on the background layer, click OK, and drag it above. Now the good thing about this is a lot of this is a hard edges and square. So I'm gonna grab my marquee tool and carefully make a selection, drag that over there and tap the delete key and just get rid of those pixels. So just get rid of the biggest stuff first. And I could zoom in to be more accurate, but uh, and then hit the delete key. It even works in between these two. Okay, now the problem is going to be this area here. 
So I need to create a protective area. Basically, I'm going to make a selection where I'm going to protect the logo and delete the white. And the best tool for that is the pen tool. Don't, don't fret. Don't worry. The pen tool, we're going to turn it into a selection. So, but the pen tool is can create these big, beautiful, smooth edges. So let's grab the pen tool. Make sure we're on a path, not on a shape. And I'll click here and let go. And then I'm going to move down into this area, click and drag a little bit. I'll hold the control key, command key on the Mac. And while I'm still dragging, I can change this here. I'll click once on the tip. And then I'll create the same shape over on the left hand side. So a smaller handle to begin with. And then about the same area over here. And I don't worry too much about this not being perfect. We'll come back to that in a second. Next up is to create a selection outside of this area. So just for safety's sake, click over on the outside of this whole area. And then you'll see a little circle show up when you're, you're now joining the beginning to the end. Okay. Now we can hold the control key down again. And if you click and drag around this area, so it's the control key on Windows command on Mac, we can get the handle back and drag that handle and place it there. So now I've got my path. What you really need to do is make sure in the paths over here, you'll notice work path is italic. If you click anywhere with another pen movement, that work path deletes and a new one comes in. I want to save this, double click on it. Double click on the work path, hit OK, and now it's saved there. So it's just a path. It's not a selection yet. If you look down here in the bottom, there is a button to load that as a selection. So when you click on it, it deselects the layer and selects this as a selection. Now, if we get our regular eraser tool and we can use the square brackets to make it bigger, the selection is going to protect the logo. So look at this. I can delete this, no problem. And the rest of the logo is OK. Deselect, Control D on Windows, Command D on Mac. And now it's a much nicer, smoother edge. OK. Remember to throw away the green background. So select that and delete it. Crop this, save this also as a ping file. So that's the hardest job is just removing that. Sometimes you're lucky, like the Cornwall, one click, boom. But even this Kent one, if I didn't have to stop and explain this, I've done this in under two minutes. Let's go into Premiere Pro and import them. OK, in Premiere Pro, I'm going to click on the Graphics Workspace. And this is in the newest Creative Cloud version. If you got CS6, you don't got this. Click on the Graphics Workspace, and it brings up the Graphics Workspace. To import the logo, go to the Graphics menu and create a new layer from file. And I'm going to go into my logos and find the PNG file. So this is the Cornwall logo. That's PNG. That's the Photoshop file that I saved that I could use also. And there's the JPEG. So that's the PNG. I'll open that and it shows up. You'll notice down here on the bottom, Premiere Pro has created a graphic, a motion graphics template. And it's more than just one logo. If I want to, I can bring in the next logo again by going to the graphics or over in the Essential Graphics panel, clicking on the little new layer and choose From File. And again, I'll grab the PNG and drop it in. I've got two separate files here, and I can work with those and scale that, place those up here for now. You'll also notice these red highlights showing, and that's because I've got Snap Graphics on. That's this button here. To bring this button out, click on the Button Editor. And you'll see it and drag it out there. Click OK. And you can turn that on and off if you want to snap the graphics. OK. 
So now that I've got the logos, and I, I do want to make those a little bit smaller. Okay, and I'll just drag them up into the middle. So the next job is to create a rectangle graphic on each side. And if you look at your pen tool, if you click and hold, you'll see a rectangle tool. I'm going to click on the top left hand side and drag it out to about that area there. Currently, there is no way to set the size of this graphic. I can't say 600 pixels wide by 1080 high. There isn't. You've got to manually eyeball it. Um, okay, so for this graphic here, with this one selected, I'm going to go to my appearance and we'll make this an amber color. Click OK. And you'll notice our transparency slider. And if I drag that down, get this nice look. So we'll keep that about 60%. And every time I'm adding something over here on the on the in the left, it's showing up on the right. And you can change the order of this just by dragging these up and down. You can also rename these. So I could rename this C for Cornwall bar. Okay. The easiest way to make one for Kent is to right click and duplicate it. And it's named the exact same thing. So let's right click on it and change that to K. And in my align and transform, if I click and drag, it's just a little bit more accurate just to drag this over to the right instead of trying to manually move it. I'll click in the fill color and change this to blue. Click OK. All right, so now we've got our logos. And we've got, let me just try to make these equal. Got my logos and the bars on both sides. Now we need to add the text in here. And for that, I'm going to copy the text that I already have. All right, so I have this text and I'm going to select the Cornwall team. Copy that. And go back to Premiere Pro. Click on the type tool. Make sure I still have this graphic selected. If you don't, you could easily be making a complete new motion graphics template with the text. Remember, we're doing all of these things inside. This is replacing the legacy titler. And if you've got the legacy titler, you can do this exact same thing, but the legacy titler will eventually go away. So let's add the text. I'll click once and paste. So I'll paste that text in. You can see it comes in and I've, I've added a tab in here from the original text. And the default setting for this is way over there on the right hand side. So I'll select all. And then you'll notice in my settings, oops, I've got a tab value here. And I'm just going to drag that number over to the left just to scooch it in there. Okay. So for the Text, I'm going to use Source Sans Pro at 30. And I'm going to add a white three point stroke around the back. With that graphics, snap graphics selected, if I move this around, you'll see I'm in the center and I'm in the center. I like this because I don't have to look at any math to, to line this up. I now know it's in the center of the screen and in the center of that left hand bar. Just like before, we need the Kent roster. So instead of starting this again, why not just duplicate it? So over on the right hand side, right click and duplicate. Drag that over to the right. Go back to my text. This time, select the Kent team. Copy that. Go back over here. Select all. Paste. And you can see it keeps the same formatting. Last, let's grab the referee information down at the bottom. Copy that. 
And for this, I'll also duplicate this and then manually move it down here. Select all and paste and paste in the referee information. Get my move tool and there's the text center directly. One last uh, note about formatting this is that there is the ability to uh, use a master style. So let's say that I was going to try this without the stroke. So I'm gonna save this as a master style. So create a text style. I'll call this with stroke. And then I'll turn this off and you'll see these two buttons turn on, sync from master style or push to master style. The idea here is that this on, those buttons only turn on if you have at least one style saved. And sometimes you're updating a style, updating it, and you can save that style. Instead of modifying that one, let's create a new style, create new master style, no stroke. So now I can go between with stroke and no stroke, and I can also do that between all the rest of these. So um, let's try it with stroke with a different color. So I'm gonna click on each one of these and apply it with stroke. So they're all the same. And then I'm going to change the color of the stroke just to something completely different Okay, so I've updated the with stroke, it's modified. If I now push this to the master style, you'll see it update on the page. So uh, I think that looks horrible. So let's go back and make that white and push that style there. And that's how we can get team sheets. So let me just select the whole graphic and apply a default transition on there. And it pops in just like that and pops out. And this is one graphic. And if we wanted to, we could save this graphic, export this as a motion graphics template, and we could save this anywhere we want. I'm gonna put it in my essential graphics. And now I'll go to here, drag it right out to the timeline. And you can see there it is. So if I wanted to, I could save that with placeholder text, but all the formatting and drop it in. The logos, they're over in the project bin over here. So if I just replace that, so if you right click and replace that footage with a different logo, so you, again, you could have two placeholder logos in there, just make sure you have two of them and they will show up in the project bin. You replace them and they're replaced in the file in there. So it is a little bit involved, but um, once you get this under your, your belt and you're familiar with it, um, we go from nothing to two transparent logos and the team rosters dropped in with all of these graphics. And, and that's without any you know extensive graphic knowledge. Uh, pretty easy to do and understandable. If you're using older versions of Premiere Pro, the bars that are transparent, the logos that are brought in, you can use the old legacy titler. But I wanted to concentrate on some of the new features in Premiere Pro. All right. Hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Reveal, please take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us a little bit more? like Mark, and uh, you can feel free to donate as he did uh, after I helped him on this one, or you can join us on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen to you and develop a whole tutorial just for your workflow.